Hi, I'm Philip and I'm doing a Super Inspire Industrial Link PhD at the University of Strathclyde, Glasgow. My industrial partners are Hariba Scientific, the Fluorescence Spectroscopy Division and NPL Biotechnology Group. And I'm going to talk about super resolution microscopy and in particular I'm going to focus on D-Storm, that is direct stochastic optical reconstruction microscopy. The field of super resolution microscopy was awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry last year. Eric, Stefan and William used fluorescence and fluorescence techniques to extend the limitation of the confocal microscope. Microscopes had been held back by the presumed limitation that they would never obtain a better resolution than half the wavelength of light used to image. Eric, Stefan and William used some sophisticated chemistry the latest developments in fluorescence instrumentation and some basic physical principles to circumvent this diffraction limit. Many of the applications are within the life sciences, presented as a ruler in log scale of common biological objects. We start with an ant which is one millimeter in size and we can view this by eye. And at the ends, we have a single molecule which is one nanometer in size. One nanometer is one millionth of a millimeter. The diffraction limit blurs everything below 250 nanometers and as you can see from this scale we are missing a lot of information. D-Storm can extend the limitation of the fluorescence microscope to about 20 nanometers which gives us a wealth of more information fundamental to the studies of disease and the creation of new therapeutics. Let's use an overly simplified physical system to demonstrate the diffraction limit. Two fluorophores are right beside each other within a diffraction limited plane. As a consequence, their wave functions overlap and if they are imaged using a standard confocal microscope, we get this blurred curve on the right and we have no individual information from the first fluorophore or from the second fluorophore. We just have this blurred curve and we cannot get any more information. If, on the other hand, we set up conditions in such a manner that the fluorophores stochastically blink, we can measure the first fluorophore without the second fluorophore and we can localize it simply by fitting mathematically to the center of the single molecule blink and we can do the same for the second fluorophore if we can measure it without the first fluorophore. Naturally the more times we can measure the first fluorophore without the second fluorophore the better we can localize it and the more times we can measure the second fluorophore without the first fluorophore the more times we can localize it. So we can simply sum up all the frames and we'll just get the raw data which is identical to the diffraction limited blur that we measured in the previous slide. On the other hand we can be smart and we can plot the sum of accepted localizations. This sum of accepted localizations will give us a super resolution image where we can resolve one and we can resolve two separately. Since we know the positions of one and two, we've essentially overcame the diffraction limit. Let's just show this in two dimensions because naturally you have more than two points to form an image. So we're localizing each single molecule blink and Again, we can plot the sum of localizations, and this gives us a super resolution image, which is equivalent to the physical system. Or we can plot the sum of all images, and we get this blur. And this blur is equivalent to the standard diffraction limited image that one would normally measure. Let's look at some raw data. We've got essentially a four dimensional data set. We've got x and y positions, we've got intensity, and we're measuring the intensity with respect to time. Each blink on this image is a single molecule. 
we can flip the data around the x-axis and we can flip it around the y-axis to see the blink durations. What we want are bright single molecules that are off most of the time and on for a very short duration. We want them to blink multiple times so we can measure them multiple times. This allows us to resolve each blink individually and it allows us enough data to obtain a high enough resolution to get the best super resolution image possible. Getting samples to exhibit the desired blink characteristics is very difficult and is the main limitation of DStorm. I'd like to end thanking all my supervisors at the University of Strathclyde, Pariba Scientific and NPL. And I would also like to thank SUPA for funding my studentship.